Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Cooler Master Masterbox Q300L. I did receive this product to review, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this case, you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's the retail box and packaging, walking you through some of the key tech specs and dimensions for this case and what parts and components it's able to support. Additional info on the back, and we have a cool side view of the case right there. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. This video is sponsored by Software Keep, shop software products ranging from one user to enterprise licenses. Their software includes Microsoft Office, Microsoft 365, Windows 10 and 11, along with antivirus for PC and Mac users. For my viewers, they are offering an additional 20% off site-wide using code DD20. So be sure to enter code DD20 at checkout today. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature featuring all the included parts and components, different installation instructions depending on what you're trying to accomplish with the panels as well as your motherboard, GPU, power supply units. You can flip it over to the back side. They walk you through hard drive installation, SSDs, cooling fans and radiators. We have our front panel IO configuration. You can move it along the sides and additional fan setup as well as our magnetic screen options right there. Everything's very thorough and detailed. Here's all the rest of the included parts and pieces with all of our screws for our standoffs and our motherboard as well as our hard drive and some zip ties. We even have the included socket in there as well. And lastly, we have the case itself. Let's go ahead, let's look at this in more detail. Here's a look at the case from the top. Check it out, I really like the pattern we have on our magnetic removable cover. Looks really nice. We have our metal grating right here. Now you're looking at the front of the case right here. We have the Cooler Master logo and branding up at the top and our second removable magnetic cover revealing more metal grating on the front panel of this case. Now you're looking at the back side of the case. Up at the top, we have our motherboard cutout as well as our exhaust fan, four expansion slots, and our power supply spot at the bottom. Now you're looking at the bottom of the case. This cover is also removable. You'll have to go ahead, peel these off, and we could remove the screen if desired. We also have four nice feet that do give a little gap of airflow and breathability to the very bottom of this case with all the ventilation that's under the screen. Now you're looking at the front side panel of our case. This is a nice see-through plastic. We still have some of the tape on it. Pay attention to our front panel IO and connector right here. We can reposition this if we want it at the top, the bottom or the other side, we have the ability to remove this and configure it as we see fit. Now you're looking at the inside with the front panel removed. We do have one single exhaust fan included. Our motherboard can be either a micro ATX or a mini ITX. Power supply down at the bottom, some additional room off to the side for cable management, installing a hard drive, things along those lines. Our cables all routed right here, but again, remove those two screws and we can reposition that wherever we want on the front. Here's the back side of the case. So we just have one solid piece of metal for our back panel and four screws we need to remove to remove the cover. Now we have that back panel removed. Check out the space we have in here for cable management, adding some additional drives, whether it's a disk drive or if you wanna add some solid state drives. Couple of different cable management options you have too, depending on what you're trying to accomplish with your build. But it's nice to see we do have a gap here to allow for us to easily connect everything and tuck away all of our hubs, controllers, and drives in the back of this case. Now it's time to go ahead and get our PC built. So here's a look at our completed build. Everything went really smoothly. I'm really happy with how things turned out. We have an EVGA RTX 3050 installed, but just for fun, when I was building the PC, I did install our 3080 Founders Edition card. You can see this one's fairly long in length, and we did have plenty of room to spare in here, so you can install smaller GPUs or larger GPUs. There's a little bit more room to build within a case like this versus let's say the Cooler Master NR200. So I'm really happy with the compromises between having a slightly larger form factor than the NR200, 
but not too large of a PC where you couldn't put this on your desk or take it with if you wanted to a LAN party or things along those lines. Here's a look at the build up close. Check it out. From the front, we have our 240 millimeter fans that we added. On the back, we swapped out the exhaust fan for one of our Master Fan MF120 halos. In the 140 versions, again, we're using those on the front right there. EVGA RTX 3050, our gorgeous Cooler Master XG850 power supply with built-in display giving us our temp. We have our fan RPMs voltage all of that good stuff right there and what's nice about this case is you can actually see a display like this this is why we picked this case for this build i do wish they had a shroud here though to cover this so we could cover this rat's nest so to speak and then here's our cooler this is the cooler master hyper 212 rgb black edition with rgb fan i'm currently using the gigabyte rgb fusion software to manage everything and I always have trouble with Corsair RAM, so you gotta usually use their IQ software. Sometimes that then enables you to be able to use third-party software, but it doesn't seem to play too nicely. And without using the included hub for this cooler, we um, aren't getting any sort of fan control, which is interesting because we're supposed to. So with that being said, if you're buying fans anyways and you're doing this exact same build, I would highly recommend swapping out this included fan for the Master Fan MF120. And in this case, there's just not enough room to add another one right here comfortably, in my opinion. But you can definitely add one on that side and swap that out. So the motherboard we're using for this build is the Gigabyte Aorus B550i Pro AX Gaming motherboard. We also paired that with an AMD 5600G CPU that does have integrated graphics, so we could use it without our GPU here, but I still decided to add the RTX 3050 to this build. I also want to mention you can remove and place this panel up at the top or down at the bottom. Just make sure your power supply isn't in the way and you choose a small enough cooler if you want it mounted at the top. In our case, I thought I'd be able to sneak it in right here, but it was just too tight to get our cooler installed. So we'd have to get a nice low profile or smaller cooler if we wanted to position it up top, which is ideally what I want. But keep in mind, configure your build accordingly to how you want to place your power button in your front panel. Now we're looking at the backside so you can see our cable management right here, how we have everything routed up at the top, along the center, and then coming back in down at the bottom. Same with our fans connected right here in the center off to the side. We have different channels and ways to route cables to the front and back. Some can be done up top, tucked away underneath right here. Obviously we have a lot of slots on the side and at the bottom. And we were able to sneak a lot of our connectors right through here with our motherboard and the case. There's a little slot. We were able to get like our USB 3 through there, our front panel connectors, HD audio, things like that. Obviously CPU power, all of that came in up through the bottom. So there's a lot of room in the back to work with. However you want to tidy this up, we have plenty of zip tie and tie down points right here. And you can really go crazy with that or if you want to have a more casual routing experience or just kind of let everything go and not even worry about it at all there's something for everybody back here i also wanted to take a second and show you guys the back side of this case so obviously we have our motherboard with all of our io right there our exhaust fan we have our gpu with two slots removed you will have to press these out so they don't appear to be reusable just keep that in mind so once you pop them out they're gone forever and I wanted to show at the bottom how the power supply unit looks. So this is a full size power supply. I thought this cover was a little bit goofy and interesting. I'm still not fully sure why it's designed the way it is, but it was a tight squeeze with the power cable right here. I wish they gave us a little bit more room. There's nothing wrong there, but I just thought that was a little bit too close for my own comfort. And I wish it wasn't set in. So I'm not an engineer, not sure why that's the case but it all does come together nicely. There's just a bracket you have to remove with these four screws, put that on your power supply unit, and then push it right back up and fasten those four screws in place. Now let's talk about this case and its thermal management and performance when it comes to heat buildup. So keep in mind, there's so many variables and factors that will affect the results that you're seeing from the CPU you're using to the cooler you're using to the GPU you're using and how you configure the case itself. Are you using the exhaust fan that's provided? Did you swap out fans like I did and add a couple 140 millimeter fans on the front? You're doing a push pull configuration. How you have your PC built with the specs that you choose will obviously see varying results than what we're showing here. But in our case, with how we have everything configured, we have all the panels on, the PC's under idle, 
we're showing 32.6 degrees Celsius for our CPU, and we peaked at 44.5 degrees Celsius. And for our GPU, we're showing 37.7 degrees Celsius currently, and we peaked at 38 degrees Celsius. Now let's go ahead, let's put this under full load. Under full load, you can see our temps right here. So we're showing CPU temp currently at 74 degrees Celsius. We peaked at 75 degrees Celsius. For our GPU, we're currently at 34.3 degrees Celsius and we peaked at 40.6 degrees Celsius. Now we stress the GPU using Furmark to see how warm it would get with all the panels on and under a full load. So we peaked at 66 degrees Celsius for our test. Now it's time for my favorite test. We're gonna be taking our smoke machine here and we're gonna be zapping some smoke into this case so you can get a feel for the airflow with our configuration, which has 240 millimeter intake fans, 120 millimeter exhaust fan, no fans up at the top, but again, this is vented. We could obviously add some in the future if we wanted, but naturally hot air should rise up and out on its own. So let's go ahead, let's put some smoke in and you can get a feel for the airflow. Look at that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So that air comes in, exhaust right out the back as you'd expect, as well as some of that was rising up and coming out of the top all on its own. I just watched that clip back myself, so cool. Again, the air came in right here as we expected, anticipated it, got sucked up with our CPU cooler, because again, we're bringing that cool air in to push it through the radiator to cool off our CPU. And then majority of that warm air was being exhausted right out of the back as you would expect with our active fan, giving us that nice cooling. But again, we did see some of that rising up out of the top as well naturally. Now keep in mind with the GPU when those fans are spinning, that's gonna be pulling in air from the bottom of this case, a little bit from the side and then exhausting that warm air right up here at the CPU cooler. So some of that would be coming in from that front fan, but a lot of it's gonna be sneaking up on this side too and exhausting right out of the case. Let me share with you my final thoughts after building with the Cooler Master Q300L. Overall, my experience, I've had a great experience building in this case. Everything turned out nicely and I'm really happy with the size. It's exactly what I'm looking for. Something that's small and compact that can be actually placed on my desk without being in the way and small and compact enough if I ever need to take it with me somewhere, whether it's a gaming event or if I need to do some editing on the road and I want a really powerful system, then I can easily transport this PC as well. So overall, really pleased with the form factor and the design. It really is the best of both worlds in my opinion. And it's not too small where you're really limited in your part selection. I feel like we still have a lot of freedom with the parts and components that we can put in this build. Heck, I even put a 3080 Founders Edition in this case and we still had some extra room. Now, with that being said, there are some things I wanna see improved in the future. The first one is I'd like to have even more functionality with this removable front panel. It'd be great if we could also maybe have an option to install it up at the top, even on the front. I'd love to see some advanced configuration settings there. Second thing is we have a plastic front panel. This just feels cheap to me. So I'd like to have this be tempered glass in the future, even if that means it costs a couple bucks more for the case overall. Lastly, for myself, I've been moving this PC around a lot. You probably won't, but in my experience, if you plan to build in this PC because you want to take it with you weekly, daily, whatever, I don't know what you're doing with it, you will tend to move these magnetic covers around and it gets a little bit annoying and frustrating that they move. I do like that they move, so it's kind of a catch-22 for me. I like that they're removable, easy to clean, easy to put on and off, but if you do plan to consistently move this PC around, you'll probably find these a little bit cumbersome and bothersome. But overall, size is great. Plenty of freedom with the parts and components that we can choose. Did a good job with cooling. Everything was well within range as you would expect with the Cooler Master case. My real knock is just this, and that's not gonna be a knock for most people. And I guess, you know, not having the temper glass. But other than that, I think the only other thing I'd wanna see improved or changed would be having some better fans that come with this case. There's only one fan, it's the exhaust fan that's included, and it's not even 
like a nice Cooler Master fan, and I love Cooler Master fans. They do a great job, like the Master Fan Halo series that we went ahead and installed here. I'd like to see them include some nicer fans and at least two fans. I think three would be ideal, kind of like how we have ours configured. Give us you know, two 140s in an exhaust fan, something like that, that would be really neat. It would be greatly appreciated for most people that are building, because keep in mind, if you're building yourself, obviously you might have an AIO, so you could maybe use that, configure that, but you're probably still gonna have to pick up an extra fan or two.